let's investigate the sampling distribution of the sample variance. This is an introductory video showing some basic properties of the distribution of the sample variance, and showing why inference procedures for the variance do not work well under some violations of the normality assumption. Here's the sample variance S squared. In this video, a lowercase s squared represents the random variable that is the sample variance. The sample variance s squared is an estimator of the population variance sigma squared. Regardless of the distribution from which we are sampling, the expectation of the sample variance s squared is equal to the population variance sigma squared. So we say that the sample variance is an unbiased estimator of the population variance. But the variance and shape of the sampling distribution of the sample variance depend on the distribution from which we are sampling and the sample size. So let's take a look at a few different distributions. Suppose we are sampling n independent observations from a normally distributed population that has a variance of sigma squared. Then the quantity n minus 1 times s squared over sigma squared has the chi squared distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. When sampling from most other distributions, the sampling distribution of the sample variance does not work out quite so cleanly mathematically, but for the normal distribution, it does. Now let's see what the sampling distribution of the sample variance looks like in a few different scenarios. We'll start off with sampling from a normal distribution. Let's sample from a normally distributed population with sigma squared equal to 1. For simplicity, I'm fixing sigma squared at 1 here, but the situation would be very similar for any value of sigma squared. I'm starting out with a sample size of 5. Here the curve in red is the chi-square distribution with 4 degrees of freedom. The quantity n minus 1 times s squared over sigma squared has this distribution. In this case, that's simply 4 times s squared. To verify that, let's simulate 100,000 values of s squared for samples of size 5 from a normal distribution. That's what this gray histogram represents, 100,000 simulated values of this quantity. And it fits this red curve very closely. But let's rescale the x-axis so that we no longer have this quantity on the x-axis, but we have s squared alone. I'm going to be dividing all of these values by 4 here. The area under each curve that I'll be plotting is always going to be 1. The scaling on the y-axis is going to be changing in these plots and I'm going to leave the y-axis off to lessen the visual clutter. And this is what we end up with. This is the sampling distribution of the sample variance when we are sampling five observations from a normally distributed population where sigma squared is equal to one. We can see that the histogram of 100,000 simulated values of s squared when n equals five closely follows the red curve, which is a rescaled chi-square distribution the distribution we'd expect to get if we were sampling from a normally distributed population with sigma squared equal to 1. We can see that the sample variance varies about the population variance of 1, and there is some right skewness in the distribution of the sample variance. It's definitely not normal. I'm truncating the plot at 5 here. There are a few values of the sample variance s squared that are greater than 5, but it's less than 1 in 1,000 here. Let's see what happens when we increase the sample size. Here the gray histogram represents 100,000 values of the sample variance s squared for samples of size 20 from a normally distributed population where sigma squared is equal to 1. The red curve represents the true theoretical distribution of the sample variance in this scenario. Although the distribution is a little closer to normal, there is still some right skewness. And because of the larger sample size, the values are a little more tightly grouped about the true variance of 1. If we increase the sample size to 100, the distribution of the sample variance is looking much more tightly grouped about the true variance of 1, and it's looking quite normal. But what happens when we sample from non-normal distributions? Here we're going to sample from this distribution in blue, which is a uniform distribution. I fixed the lower and upper bounds such that the variance is 1. For a little perspective, I'm superimposing a normal curve in green that has the same mean and variance. So both of these distributions have a variance of 1. Compared to a normal distribution with the same variance, this uniform distribution has a flatter peak and lighter tails, 
less area far out in the tails. Because of this, we say that the uniform distribution has a lower kurtosis than the normal distribution. And that has some implications for the sampling distribution of the sample variance. One major implication is that we're not going to get extreme values from a uniform distribution. So the sample variance will not take on large values as often as it does when we are sampling from a normal distribution. Let's take a look at that. Here the gray histogram represents 100,000 values of the sample variance when we are sampling five observations from the uniform distribution with sigma squared equal to 1. The histogram represents approximately the sampling distribution of S squared in this scenario. The red curve is the sampling distribution of the sample variance if we were sampling from a normally distributed population. We can see here that there doesn't appear to be as much skewness in the distribution of the sample variance as when we are sampling from a normally distributed population. And there aren't quite as many extreme values. When we increase the sample size to 20, we can see more clearly that the sampling distribution of S squared is not as variable as when we are sampling from a normally distributed population. Here we sampled from a uniform distribution, which doesn't result in extreme values, so the variance of the sampling distribution of S squared is less than if we were sampling from a normally distributed population. And for a sample size of 100, we see a similar effect. The sampling distribution of S squared is looking roughly normal, and tightly grouped about the true variance of 1. Now let's look at a distribution that has heavier tails than the normal distribution. Here we'll sample from the distribution in blue, which is based on the T distribution with 5 degrees of freedom, but I've rescaled it such that it has a variance of 1. Once again this green curve is a normal distribution with the same mean and variance. This blue curve has a sharper peak and heavier tails than the normal distribution, so we can say that the distribution in blue has greater kurtosis than the normal distribution. It might not look like it has heavier tails in this plot, but it does. And to make that a little more clear, I'm going to blow up these tails. We can see here that far out in the left and right tails, the distribution in blue has heavier tails than the normal distribution. This will result in more extreme values of the sample variance S squared, and overall there will be more variability in S squared. Let's take a look at that. Here again the gray histogram represents 100,000 simulated values of S squared. That is approximately the sampling distribution of S squared in this scenario. We can see here that there is quite a bit of right skewness. Visually it might not be obvious, but here there is more variability in S squared than when we are sampling from a normally distributed population. This becomes a little more clear when we increase the sample size. For a sample size of 20, the gray histogram of values of the sample variance has more skewness than when we are sampling from a normally distributed population. It also has more extreme values, more large values and more smaller values of S squared, and fewer values in the middle. The variance of the sampling distribution of S squared is greater than when we are sampling from a normally distributed population. If we increase the sample size to 100, we see that the sampling distribution of S squared is looking a little more normal, but there is still some skewness, and it is definitely more variable than when we are sampling from a normally distributed population. Let's take a quick look at one more distribution. The distribution in blue is an exponential distribution with a variance of 1, and the superimposed green curve is a normal distribution with the same mean and variance. This exponential distribution obviously has some right skewness, but it also has a heavier right tail. It might not be obvious, but there is more area far out in the right tail. This exponential distribution is going to result in more extreme values of the sample variance S squared. That might not be obvious from the plot, but it's true. Let's take a look. Here again, the gray histogram is, approximately, the sampling distribution of the sample variance in this scenario. We can see that there are a few more small values of S squared than when we are sampling from a normal distribution, and there are also a few more large values. This becomes a little more obvious when we increase the sample size. Here's a sample size of 20, 
we can see some right skewness in the sampling distribution of S squared. And the gray histogram has more extreme values and greater variability than the red curve, which is the distribution of the sample variance if the population were normal. And here's a sample size of 100. The gray histogram is looking a little more normal, but it definitely still has some right skewness and definitely has much greater variability than when we are sampling from a normally distributed population. Now let's review some important points. When sampling from a normally distributed population, the quantity n minus 1 times s squared over sigma squared has the chi-square distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. And regardless of whether we're sampling from a normal distribution or non-normal distribution, the sampling distribution of s squared will be approximately normal for large sample sizes. The sample size might need to be very large, depending on the distribution from which we are sampling. When sampling from non-normal populations, the variance of the sampling distribution of the sample variance can be much less or much greater than when we are sampling from a normally distributed population with the same value of sigma squared. The variance of the sampling distribution of the sample variance depends on the kurtosis of the distribution from which we are sampling, meaning how sharp the peak is and how heavy the tails are. And that results in this problem inference procedures for sigma squared that are based on the assumption of a normally distributed population can work very poorly if this assumption is violated. This is a problem even for large sample sizes. Large sample sizes do not save us from this problem. In another video, I look more closely at the effect of a violation of the normality assumption on inference procedures for the variance.